Good morning, everybody, and what a lovely morning it is here in sunny Yorkshire. The sun is shining, and I hope you're all doing fantastically well. We're here to provide you with some more rumours on the mill today, so make sure you stick around till the end because we've got some fruitful stuff to talk about, and that's what we like to do on the One Leads Fan Channel. It's not just about listing rumours and listing talking points. I actually want to have a discussion with you guys, so get it in the comment section below. I read absolutely every single comment as well. Please like the video before we start. If we can get to a 1,000 and likes that would be unbelievable and as well if you haven't subscribed what are you doing 60% of you as I keep saying are not subscribed and still watch the content it really helps me guys if you just hit a red button that's it and you'll get notified every single time we upload which is probably around six days a week so you're definitely getting value for your money there and um, but what have we got to speak about today well of course uh we've had rumors haven't we overnight we've had rumors the last couple of days about lead signings you know uh, we've had we've had the rumors about Farid Balaya now that one hopefully for me will get done because I love his technical ability his capabilities in and around uh, the penalty box he looks for a like he looks like a like for like replacement for Pablo Hernandez and we had a real discussion about Farid yesterday go check the video out yesterday we broke down why Leeds United would probably want to sign um, the Algerian but it looks very very exciting so hopefully that one's going to get done but this one is a little bit different you know this one is something that we didn't see coming in and with Leeds United you never really see these things coming the question for me with this individual is is is, is he going to go into the you know the under 23 setup or is he going to come into the first team setup and the reason I say that is because of the caliber of the guy his name is Lewis Bate now you, you can watch highlight reels of him, you can see his who scored ratings, you can see scouting reports on him, you can see all the Chelsea fans talking about him. This guy is a, a world-class talent from what we've seen so far. Defensive midfielder, central midfielder, and the reason I'm talking immediately about, you know, will he be on the periphery of the first team pretty much instantaneously is if we can get someone in that capacity to be able to come in and to be able to replace Calvin Phillips potentially if he's injured to be able to play in that in that six and eight role potentially if, if, if our players within those roles are not able to obviously compete that could be very, very interesting because with this summer spell, Marcelo Bielsa will be able to get him up to speed with the Leeds United way. I do probably think that he's going to join the 23s, but if he featured uh, 20 times for Chelsea under-23s last year and was absolutely integral, his capabilities, as I said at the start, are unbelievable. He looks like a real, real player. Now, the Daily Mail have reported that Leeds, Liverpool, Southampton and West Ham United are all interested in in uh, Lewis Bay. I think the thing that stands Leeds United in such good stead is the history. You know, what we are doing with our youth products and how we're going to, how we're able to get them into first team football. You know, you look at the recent, recent first teamers from the 23s, JB Shackleton, Niall Huggins, amongst others. So I think that's going to be very, very attractive. I think what's also going to be very attractive for Lewis Bay coming to Leeds United, if that does happen, is the fact that Leeds are looking to bolster the central midfield area. And you've seen the likes of Calvin Phillips, who's come through and he's been given a chance and, and now look where he is and and I think that is something that's going to be very, very attractive to any youngster. You know, we've seen Cody Drama, Leeds have managed to get him off other clubs' hands. Uh, Gelhard, the big one, who were, there, were, there were 10, 11 clubs after him. Leeds managed to acquire his services. Greenwood, apparently there were four or five in for him. So Leeds have a real pulling power now, a real pulling power now. And, and, and it shows it with the investment in the youth. So I think it's going to be very attractive for, for Lewis Bate. Another really good thing that we've seen so far is the fact that he's followed about 10 Leeds players, <laughs> including, you know, Know, the likes that you wouldn't expect, like Crescencio, Somerville, but then he's then then you've you've also had Leeds players follow him back as well. Rafinha's followed him back, Matthias Click, I think Ailing's there as well. So that's very unusual. And and you might not take that as a metric, and I completely understand why you wouldn't take that as a metric because it's living in this false reality of the social media world. But guys, I'll break it to you now. This is the reality. The social media world can be our our you know our zone now isn't it footballers make their opinions known on on social media they're able to give hints on social media and i think you know the fact that about 10 leeds players have started following him that is a big hint and, and it'll be interesting to see if leeds have already got this one done that's going to be the fascinating one but yeah he stalled on a deal with chelsea which i love i love the fact that there might be potential behind that, and the reasoning behind that is is probably because he wants to play first team football. Does he ever see a pathway into the first team at Chelsea? Arguably not. Uh, Lampard was praising him when he was at Chelsea uh, as the manager, you know, not as the player, as the manager, obviously. And um, you know, 
this guy looks like a real, real talent. As I say, I urge you to go and check his highlights out. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether or not he's going to be bolstering the youth. I don't know whether or not he's going to be on the periphery of the first team, which we've seen Gelhard, Greenwood, Huggins in particular, Cody Drama, or you know, or is he gonna is he gonna just stick to the 23s? It's going to be really interesting to see because his ability, you know, we always say, don't we? If you're old enough, you're good enough. You're old enough, you're good enough. And if this guy's ripping it up for the Chelsea under 23s, who have the who probably have the best European academy, um, or and one of the best academies in the world, then you know this this would be a real, real coup for Leeds United. Adama Traore. We're back talking about Adama, aren't we? But apparently Leeds United are back in for him. Apparently there's rumours that his valuation might be going down again. And apparently Leeds and Liverpool could be battling out, battling it out for his signature. Apparently Leeds are uh, weighing up a bid. We have obviously interest in Adama Traore. We've spoken about this numerous times in terms of on the room mill about where he would fit into this Leeds United side. I would... I would I would bang on the drum of caution with this one. The reasoning behind that is because of Jack Harrison on the left, Rafinha on the right, and, and I just do not see Adama Traore coming into this Leeds United setup. The link is always going to be there with Victor Orta. He signed him at Middlesbrough, which was a huge coup at the time, a massive coup at the time. But I also look at his valuation. What's he going to be demanding per week? Liverpool are in for him as well. Jurgen Klopp absolutely loves him. And, you know, if Bielsa and Jurgen Klopp are massive fans, I know we're all talking about him scoring one goal and two goals in, in you know, last season and him not hitting those dizzy heights. But I always say this with Leeds, and I always say this with my mates as well, when you've got top quality coaches, and I'm not for one saying that Nuno's not a top quality coach that he was at Wolves, but I, I do believe that Marcelo Bielsa is, is is light years ahead. I also believe Jurgen Klopp as a coach is light years ahead. Look at the, the pedigree. Look at what they've done at their times at the respective clubs, Leeds United and Liverpool. So I think for those sort of managers to be interested in Adama Traore, I believe there's a project there. I believe both managers are looking at wingers. And I think Traore is the step up. And I could not imagine him. Um, in the in the lead setup with Marcelo Bielsa, as 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 I say, I think he could take him to the next level. You know, he, he was still picked for Spain. We all talk about Rodrigo not being in that side, and you look at Rodrigo's form towards the end of the season. It was very good. What was it? Four goals in five. Didn't get in the setup. Traore still, even with one or two goals, whatever he got last year, not his best year was put in that Spain squad because everybody knows his capabilities. So obviously it will depend on valuation. Obviously it will depend on wages if Leeds want a winger. As I said yesterday, it's an opportunistic market. Will Leeds United go in for something like that or will they wait for Wolves to come out and properly lower the valuation? It's going to be a really interesting one, that. And, and following on from the winger chat, Josip Bracalo, I was speaking about him Loads of times on the room, Mill. He's played for he's played for Stuttgart. He's played for Wolfsburg. He's been in Germany now for five years. He is a Croatian winger, 23 years of age. We've spoken about him on the room mill before. We've done a breakdown him on the room mill before. Very quick winger, very tricky. Either feel, either foot, sorry. Um, goals, assists. His numbers are very good. I think he's had 112 appearances, and I think he's scored something like 13. I think he's got something like 17, 18 assists. You have to fact check me on that. But he does produce. He does produce. He's only a young lad. And I think that's what Leeds look at. You know, we're not going to be going out and having a guy who's played 115 appearances, who's had 115 appearances, who's scored 100 goals, who's got 80 assists. It doesn't happen like that. You know, I still feel some fans believe that that is how Leeds work in terms of going out and getting a product. I think the thing with Leeds is, and the thing with Bielsa and Orta, what we do is we look for, for talents. Aside from Rodrigo, you know, who's, who's on the, 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 the counter end of 30, we look for talents who Leeds United can bolster up and turn into proper, proper players. That's the metric. That's how we measure things. That's the model. Um, and I fully believe that Leeds are going to be doing that. And that's why I think Traore is a bit unlikely. But someone like Bracalo would be someone who I could see Leeds United going for. Not a starter, but someone who could grow into a starter and really start competing with the likes of Rafinha and with the likes of Harrison, which is essentially what we want in this Leeds United setup. But Leeds have watched him for a couple of years now. We mentioned him on the room mill before. Apparently, last year, Orta had gone and had talked and talks broke down so it'll be really fascinating to see if this one gets done guys as i said i hope you've enjoyed the conversation let me know in the comment section below exactly what you think i hope you're enjoying the room mill and trying to crack out this content every single day and yeah i hope that you you guys seem to be loving it at this moment in time so subscribe as i say if you're new and you've enjoyed the content like the video comment down below and i'll see you tomorrow morning cheers